Let's try checking out GIMP. Oh, that is not a very elegant looking GIMP guy. That's, he looks not too happy to be on that splash screen. <laughs> now what made Ubuntu 8.04 long-term support? Ugh, freaking cars. In addition, talking about some of the system stuff, This is why I don't make videos on time all the time, because like this happens. Good day folks, Jordan here, and welcome to another software overview video. Today we're exploring Ubuntu 8.04 long-term support, known as Hardy Heron, released on the 24th of April 2008. This was Ubuntu's second major long-term support release, succeeding off of 6.06 .06 LTS. Now, support for this particular release, since this is an LTS release, ended on the 12th of May 2011 for desktop users, and the server version actually was dropped from support on the 9th of May 2013, so quite a long time of support for a Linux distribution, especially one that features long-term support. Now, what made Ubuntu 8.04 Long-term support. Ugh, freaking cars. Now what made Ubuntu 8.04 long-term support special was the fact that it featured Active Directory support, which was a big deal for people on Windows networks who wanted to be able to connect to their existing Active Directory network. Well, now you could in Ubuntu 8.04 long-term support. I don't know if this was some kind of feature that many businesses or enterprise or education people wanted to make use of before they would actually deploy Ubuntu 8.04 onto their network. I'm not too sure, but it is still a nice feature to see come into Ubuntu. Another interesting new thing about this particular release of Ubuntu is that there is a new version that was released called Ubuntu Netbook Remix. This was its first release, apparently. Now, from what I've been able to gather online, Ubuntu Netbook Remix was supposed to be a specific version of Ubuntu, which was more tailored to run on netbooks with low screen resolutions, weak CPUs, weak graphics, low RAM, low storage, you know, you get the memo. Now, this continued on until I think 11.04 when they discontinued it. It might have been 10.10 .10 that was the last release. I'm not entirely sure. But it was supposed to be a lower stressed uh, version of Ubuntu to run on lower end hardware or netbooks, for example. So it made it a lighter experience, gave it more responsiveness, that sort of thing. But again, it was pretty short lived. Now there was a bunch of other things that came with Ubuntu 8.04 long-term support because this is a long-term support release after all. Some of the new features included a new torrent client or BitTorrent client, whatever you want to call it. It was Transmission. Now, I don't remember exactly what they had prior to Transmission, but this is a much more well-known and open source free BitTorrent client that you can download online today for Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and I think even a BSD ports out there, I'm not entirely sure all the platforms that it's on, but it is a known BitTorrent client. It's reliable, it is, re it is regularly updated, so that's a nice change. There's also an addition of a VNC client, if you use VNC on your network, that is included now in Ubuntu 8.04 long-term support. There's also a new disk burning application called Bracero, or at least that's what the, you know, the command is or whatever. I suppose that's probably for better CD, DVD burning, more support and better reliability, I suppose, bug fixes, all that stuff, maybe other features. There's also better desktop search integration, although I'm not entirely sure in what way, but that is something of an improvement from what I've been able to research. A lot of the system sound was also changed to using the Pulse Audio system rather than the system it was using previously, which I forget what it was, but now it uses this system called Pulse Audio for all the system sound. In addition, talking about some of the system stuff. And this is why I don't make videos on time all the time because like this happens. While we're on the topic of system improvements, there are some improvements to Compiz desktop effects, so they're more usable, probably some bug fixes in there, more compatibility. And in addition, for people who wanted to install Ubuntu 8.04 long-term support on a VMware virtual machine back in the day, that was definitely possible. There were some improvements to mouse grabbing support, 
which I don't know if that had something to do with just the base operating system itself running in VMware, and you know the operating system itself was just more aware of the fact it was running in a virtual machine, and it just you know tailored better mouse improvements to that experience, or if when you installed VMware tools, or maybe they worked with VMware directly, they made better mouse grabbing support. Not quite sure about that, but I know for a fact that it was definitely an improvement. And another thing that was improved about all the user experience was better Tango compliance. Now Tango at the time, and I'm not sure if that's still something that you know we worry about today, but back in the day, Tango was the one way to make a consistent user experience with very friendly looking icons that were universal. It was meant to be the one complete user experience as far as I've been able to read. I read it briefly, so forgive me if I'm messing up some of the terms, but this tried to make a more compliant user experience, better consistent user experience to the Tango standard, which I'm not sure if that was launched by Canonical. Again, I didn't read too much of that, so forgive me if I'm mixing some details up, but that's from what I was able to read. And finally, before we look at the operating system, and for that matter, the Wayback Machine website for Ubuntu 8.04 LTS's launch, there is a new installer on the live CD called Wubi, or maybe it was just called the Wubi installer, or W-U-B-I installer. I know the W stands for Windows, or something like that, uh, which allows for a single file installation onto a Windows hard drive without the need to repartition the hard drive, because, well, you could still repartition the hard drive if that was something you were interested in. However, for those people who were using Windows back in the day, like Windows XP, Windows Vista, maybe even Windows 2000, you could install Ubuntu on the side and not have to repartition your hard drive. And I think this goes toe to toe with the last version of Ubuntu I looked at, which added full NTFS support. I think this goes alongside that and it allows better support in that way. It better makes use of that NTFS support so it, you know, it doesn't make you have to repartition your hard drive if you want to install Linux, for example. You know, you can just install it alongside your Windows installation and have a custom bootloader on startup so you can tell it whether or not you want to boot into Windows or you want to boot into Ubuntu. It just uses the, I think they use Grub still to do that. And even today, they still do that, even if you repartition your drive or something like that, I think. I could be wrong. But anyway, it just made the user experience for Windows users a lot easier if they wanted to install Linux alongside their Windows installation. It's now a lot easier to do that. So with that having been said, let's go ahead and explore the Ubuntu 8.04 LTS website briefly. There's not too much to show, and it's not really all that exciting, but I figured since this seems to be a tradition of these videos now that I've made it anyway, well, we might as well just explore it because it won't take too terribly long. All of the meat and potatoes of this video are going to be in the operating system. I just figured I'd get the website out of the way while we, well, talk about all the other stuff. So yeah, let's get into it. So as it turns out, I was actually able to find a version of the Ubuntu 8.04 LTS website that was not broken. And the reason why I say that is because there was a version of this website, which I will show here in a little bit, that has an animation that was supposed to play that introduced the new Ubuntu 8.04 LTS at the time that's broken, and it's pretty funny. But I happen to see this one, and it says, Ubuntu MID Edition 8.04, the small Ubuntu with huge potential. And I believe this was the Ubuntu Mobile project, which eventually turned into Ubuntu Touch. I think this was the beginning of that project. And the reason why I say this is because I just did some brief research. Apparently this was the one that was designed to run on touchscreen devices, which was to help improve with open source software development for use with tablets and such. I don't know what kind of influence it actually had or still has today. I know that that, Blech. I know for a fact that Ubuntu does play a role in embedded computing with touch screens and everything, and I know there is a lot of development going on with that, but I don't know what they were doing back in 2008 with this stuff. It's just very interesting. But otherwise, there's not too much different on the website. It looks very much the same comparative to the last website, which was on 7.10, but with a minor change in that the desktop wallpaper that they use for the desktop version of Ubuntu finally is updated to show the new release, which would be Hardy Heron. So of course, that's their Heron focused wallpaper there in the website. Otherwise, it's identical. There's literally nothing different. And I suppose the same thing would go for the server edition. I never looked at the server edition version of the website for 7.10, so I'm not familiar with any kind of differences that there would be, but I suppose that there's not much different there because there's really not much to change. Now, 
Speaking of the topic of the broken website, let me go back to around the time of this operating system's release. I'll probably say the 25th of April 2008, we'll say we'll give it a day past its release. And you'll see that things go very wrong pretty quickly. Sorry about the sudden jump cut. I got a call from my college. They just wanted to check in with me, which they do on occasion. So my apologies for that. Also, I want to apologize for the background noise that you might be listening to. It just so happened to start as soon as I stopped recording. And now it's obviously going to infiltrate the background noise of my video. So my apologies for that if you actually hear it over my really big and loud voice. So yeah, that's really unfortunate. Anyway, as you can see, yeah, there's a bit going wrong here with this website. I think this is something to do with the Wayback Machine. This is not a fault of the website, but it's supposed to say all operating systems include stuff you'll never use. For example, Ubuntu 8.04 LTS includes an easy uninstall feature. We know, complete read redundant. Ubuntu 8.04 LTS for desktops. It's supposed to be an animation, but obviously it's not playing, so that's unfortunate. But Otherwise, I think the site is the same or very similar to, yeah. See, at this stage, they didn't update the wallpaper. However, they did apparently offer online training for the desktop, available now at the Ubuntu shop. That's something I've never seen before. But, anyway, um, there was one particular version of this website. There's another snapshot that the Wayback Machine has that shows the server uh, touts. I'm not sure which refresh will have it. There we go. We got it coincidentally on the first try. So as you can see, this is the stuff that they talk about for their server release, Ubuntu 8.04 LTS for servers, built for stability, Bert, bleh, Bert, built for security, built for virtualization, and there's supposed to be a thing in there, which is built for everything you want from a server, and then this is supposed to pop up all in this frame. And obviously, as you can see, it's not in there, so the website is very obviously broken, which kind of sucks. But I think they fixed it in later, um, a later snapshot here, like we'll go to July 6th and there's that Ubuntu MID edition and now the website's not broken anymore because of this new release. They're not having that animation playing or the broken animation there. So that's pretty nice. So anyway, that's enough of this website. Let's go into actually installing the operating system itself. All right, and here we go. As you can see, there is a language selection screen now when you start up the setup. So obviously I'm going to pick English. And the options are a little different. Obviously you can try Ubuntu without any change to your computer. That used to be the live option. And uh, I don't know what there is under other options. Let's see. Um, boot options. Oh, okay. So you got like no ACPI support. Um, stuff like that. Free software only. See, remember when I was talking about Gobuntu with the free software only thing? Well, that's apparently what that merged into, so that was pretty short-lived. So, <laughs> interesting. So anyway, uh, we're going to exit out of that, and we're just going to go ahead and start up normally. And here we are at the desktop of Ubuntu 8.04 LTS. As you can see, again, the wallpaper is of a Heron in Canonical's, well, flashy fashion as they always tend to do with their wallpapers. My apologies once again for the background noise. It's going to be pretty plentiful at this time of day, which is not 7.04 p.m. That's just because it's in the GMT time zone and not GMT minus seven, I think it is. So my apologies, that's a little bit off-putting. It's not actually seven o'clock. I don't know why I'd be making a video at this time of night, but it is what it is. So let's see, I don't think there's any differences as pertaining to the installation process. I think it's pretty much the same. Maybe the map has changed time. I know for a fact that now you have to hold the mouse button down whenever you go into a context menu, otherwise it will not stay. So that I know is a notable difference. So anyway, this looks identical. So we're just gonna go ahead and, well, do this. And uh, for old time's sake, let's just go ahead and show the setup on video because that's not very often I do that anymore because otherwise everything just looks identical. So might as well. But it otherwise is identical to 7.10, which is identical to 6.06. .06, so it is what it is. So I will be back once we have finished setting up and rebooted into a clean installed desktop. 
Okay, so here we are at the very low resolution lock screen of Ubuntu 8.04 LTS. As you can see, it's more stylized this time around, where it actually has a bit of, I would say, I guess, flora going on in the background. There's a lot of curvy lines and everything to obviously represent the hardy hair on theme of the operating system, so that's to no surprise by anybody. And the text is not so freakishly large like it was in 7.10 on this login screen. I don't know why it was that large. It made it kind of difficult to determine how long was your password if it was longer than 10 digits, you know, that sort of thing. Anyway, otherwise, this default color is the same. The startup sound is the same. And overall, for the most part, at this stage, it's pretty much the same. Some of these icons may have, whoops, I just triggered VMware there for a second. Some of these icons may have changed briefly, maybe the descriptions of the programs, maybe, I don't know. I do know for a fact that there is the transmission BitTorrent client there, as well as the remote desktop viewer, the terminal server client. All these are new in addition to the rest of the stuff. And OpenOffice certainly got some new icons. So since I didn't explore OpenOffice in my last video, I completely spaced doing it. I guess I must've been rushing it or something. Let's explore OpenOffice now, which now has a Sun Microsystems uh, little watermark in the lower corner of the splash screen. It is now OpenOffice 2.4, and apparently they now have a description in which they insist that they say, this is a distribution by Ubuntu of OpenOffice.org, the full featured open source office productivity suite from Sun Microsystems Incorporated and the OpenOffice.org community. That is quite a mouthful. And apparently we have software updates available. That's hilarious. What do we have available for us? Oh, there's no freaking way they still have the security updates available for this. No, no, no way. No way. Okay, let's try it. There can't be any possible way in hell that these still work. Let's, oh, where's my mouse at? Uh, oh, my mouse is not wanting to cope with the VMware today. Oh my goodness, man, that is bad. Ah. Oh, that's, I guess it's a no surprise by anybody, but I thought that was going to work. Unfortunately, I guess we just aren't so lucky today. And my mouse is just going crazy. Can I close that dialogue? Oh, God, that was ridiculous. Apparently, Ubuntu 10.04.4 LTS is available. Well, I don't think we're going to be able to upgrade to it because, well, in addition to the fact that this is no longer supported, same thing as the version that I'd be upgrading tool, I don't think that it would work anyway, because as soon as it goes to try to find everything for this, I don't suppose, yep, it just fails to download all the security updates and it just quits. So that's to no surprise by anybody, but that is pretty hilarious that that actually popped up. I was not expecting that. So <laughs> I guess, yeah, I guess you learn new things every day. I don't know. Anyway, um, I wonder if this CD DVD creator thing, no, it just looks like it's just a folder in the GNOME file browser. I wonder if it's its own separate application under like sound and video. Yeah, these are certainly different. There's not a whole lot of sound and video in here. And I know that uh, some other things changed. Um, I know for a fact that there's the Brassero disc burning, which I think it's different comparative to the one that was actually in Ubuntu, the standard CD DVD creator. I think this is something like Nero, but Ubuntu's spin on it or the open source spin on Nero, if anybody knows what I'm talking about. I think that's what that is. And I'm also gonna take a brief moment to increase the screen resolution to 1280 by 720. So that way we can actually see a little better. There we go. And then I suppose let's, uh, God damn it, I keep triggering a VMware there. Let's try checking out GIMP. Oh, that is not a very elegant looking GIMP guy. That's, he looks not too happy to be on that splash screen. <laughs> if I'm honest, but anyway, as you can see, there's GIMP. What version even is this, actually? 2.4. Ooh, GIMP is brought to you by Spencer Kimball. I bet he, he's not watching this video. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, there's GIMP. It works. And uh, um, let's see. What else was there I was going to look at? Well, I suppose, actually, since I mentioned earlier the remote desktop viewer and terminal server client, we can briefly look at the UIs for these. So obviously, this would be connected to an IP address on your network on a certain port and then that would allow you to connect to that and then of course when we go into oh, this thing is not performing so good if we go into terminal server client you can see it looks a lot like the um if anybody knows the remote desktop client for windows 
this is a, pretty much the exact same interface. They literally have not tried to hide it in any way, which is hilarious. But I guess, you know, don't change what doesn't work, I guess. I mean, I don't say I blame them, but that's just hilarious that the interface actually kind of looks similar. But let's see. Um, if I go down to internet, let's check out transmission real quick. What version of transmission does this have? This has 1.06. I wonder what the latest version of transmission is. Obviously, it's a hell of a lot newer than what this has. It's to no surprise by anybody. And of course, it runs in the background. I don't want it to do that. So let's not do that because, yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, as we always do in these videos, let's check out Firefox. Let's see what version this is. This should have 3.0. I'm not too sure, though, but it should have 3.0. Yes, it does have 3.0. And since this is a later release of Ubuntu 8.04, uh, this is 8.04.4, if you haven't already been able to tell. This does have a bunch of the security patches already applied to it, because 8.04 normally does not have Firefox 3.0.17 with it. It normally has 3.0. So this is definitely a uh, more updated version, but it doesn't really matter too much. And as you can see, this is a slightly different start page, which actually still is hosted by Canonical, which is hilarious. I love this banner. That is really nice looking. Of course, it has the hair on on the banner as well and of course welcome to ubuntu 8.04 lts it's just interesting that canonical is actually still hosting this i almost wonder and i'm going to do this real quick just because now i'm curious if i open up a new page in safari can i actually browse to this i doubt it because i almost want to say that this is just a cached page but let's find out no, they actually are still hosting that. That is amazing. I almost wonder if I go to something like, I don't know, 8.10, does that load? Yes, it does. So when we go to 8.10, I almost wonder if we're going to actually see this very same like Ubuntu style banner. That makes me wonder. So in the next version or the next installment of this little series of me looking at Ubuntu in 8.10, we're actually going to see if this is the default Firefox like home page that it opens up to. I'm legitimately curious now, which also makes me wonder is 9.04 the same way? Well, let's find out. Yes, it does. Okay, so I'll quit spoiling future videos. That's just not what I wanted to do. So let's just go back into 8.04 here. I suppose that's about all I can really show from a VMware perspective. Oh God, everything had a question mark because I don't think these work still. I think you'd still have to install VMware tools. And obviously VMware no longer supports this particular release of Ubuntu, of course. I think the minimum you have to have in order to install VMware tools is like 12.04 LTS or something like that. I don't remember which version that they had as a minimum on their modern releases of VMware tools, but I'm almost certain that they would not work on this old distribution. Oh yeah, right, I forgot. The passwords and encryption keys, that was a big deal with this particular release because previously you couldn't really set encryption, but now you can. You can create your own encryption keys and encrypt your files, encrypt your passwords, all that sort of stuff. This is kind of the one-stop shop to do it with. So that's pretty cool. So um, I almost wonder, I think there were some extra wallpapers in this. I know, no, this one didn't have it apparently. I swear, I thought there was a particular release of Ubuntu which had this style of interface that had more wallpapers in it, and I cannot remember for the life of me what version it was. So one of these versions, I will find that it has additional wallpapers and we can start playing around with them. Obviously, I know when they went to the Unity desktop environment and all that sort of stuff, they included like a bunch of different pretty looking wallpapers. I know it started with like 10.04 LTS or something like that when they started putting all the wallpapers, but I don't know. We'll get to it when we get to it. But I think for this video, that's about all I can really show because that's all there really is that's different from what I can see. So with all that having been said, I'm gonna go ahead and shut down this virtual machine. And I'd like to thank you all for coming to watch this video. And I'll see you all in the next one. So, ciao. Mm -hmm.